call it when someone has a fear of something? Phobia. Phobia. Acrophobia. What's that? Spiders. Spiders. Fear of spiders. Anybody have acrophobia? How many of you like spiders? A bat. How many of you have ever uh, held a tarantula in your hand and pet the tarantula? No. <laughs> I wouldn't do Are that. You crazy? Never will. How about how about snakes? <laughs> you guys like snakes? Yeah. How many of you like that? Pipe and crawling on and all, you know, and wrapping themselves around your neck and your, your body, huh? How many of you like snakes? Yeah. Huh? You like snakes? Yeah. I don't know, I don't like snakes. One of the reasons I don't like snakes is because when I'm working in the yard and there's gardener snake come crawling out there and it's just like, ah! <laughs> and uh, I, I, any good snake is a dead snake to me. Uh uh, yeah. Well, no. Not for you, but for me. So that's true for me. Nate, not true for you. But, no. But, <laughs> but the thing is that um, if we have fear, it might be a good thing or it might be a bad thing. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when God created us, He created something in us that. I guess if we're afraid, there's good things that we should be afraid of. When we do bad things, nobody's done bad things around here, so I'm not talking to you, right? But should you fear when you do bad things? Should you, should you, should you be afraid? What should you be afraid of? Trouble. You had to get in trouble. Um, you could be afraid to get in trouble for it. Yeah. So if if mommy tells you to do something and you don't do it, you get in trouble for it, right? You might get spankings, or if your mom doesn't do spankings, you might uh, put you on restriction. Um, you might be grounded. How many have ever been grounded before? Oh yeah? <laughs> How many of you have been spanked before? Uh, back in the old days, some of you older ones might remember uh, this thing called the Board of Education. Now, I'm not talking about the school board, okay? I'm talking about this wooden panel. Oh, you remember that? You're not in your head. You're not old enough to remember those things, right? Uh, and it said Board of Education on it. And you apply the Board of Education to the Seat of Understanding. You know, you know where the Seat of Understanding is? Right there. <laughs> I remember this kid. He used to always get in trouble. And he got taken to the principal's office. And uh, the principal says, it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And she started going at it. and. He just goes, owie, 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 and he started laughing. And boy, that, you don't do that when the principal is giving you the, the board. He was not happy with his attitude. But I, I've had the Board of Education apply to my, to my seat of understanding. In, in fact, I have heard that some places they had holes Mm -hmm. What do you mean, uh-huh? Are you one of those that got one of those? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, why do they put those holes in the board? So when they hit you, your skin will sink into it and they leave. So well, there's, there's no wind that's going to stop that board from coming because all the wind's going through those holes. <laughs> and it stings when it hits, yeah. right? It, it's called discipline, right? But maybe we have a fear of discipline so we do what is good because we don't want to get in trouble. How many of you do good just because you don't want to get in trouble? Well, let me give you something a little better than being fearful because you're going to get in trouble. And that is to fear because that is the thing to do and that we fear God and we want to do what is pleasing to God. 
You see, I think our world is kind of messed up today. In fact, the Bible tells us, uh, spare the rod. What's the rest of them? Spoil the child. Spoil the child. How many spoiled kids do we have nowadays? If you're a spoiled kid, raise your hand. Huh? Okay. Do you get spanked? Huh? Yes. You know, in fact, our school system doesn't have the Board of Education anymore because they think that's abuse, child abuse, if you hit someone. And it can be when, when a teacher lifts up a, a stick and hits you. I know um, I, I hear people that went to St. Agnes, like Victor. Um, they used to be pretty mean. Those nuns used to be pretty mean, you know. I think I, I heard where they, the teacher would uh, make you hold your fingers like this, and they would get that ruler and whack it really hard. Mm -hmm. Now that might be more abuse than and than uh, discipline, I think. Uh, but you know, how do you determine what is abuse and what is discipline? But if you know today, we got a lot of kids that are out of control, huh? Anybody know a kid that's out of control? Yeah, my whole apartment. <laughs> At times we all are out of control. Why are we out of control? Because we, we don't do what God has asked to do. And again, God gave us a simple guideline. We call it the Ten Commandments. It's up there on the corner. Um, and he says, do not do this, do not do this. But you know, there's these people that don't believe in God saying, you know, you can't put that in the school room. You can't teach people that they shouldn't kill people, that they shouldn't steal from other people, that they should honor their parents. They should, first of all, honor God above everything else. Uh, no wonder America is in trouble because they have taken the Bible out of the school they have taken the Ten Commandments out of the school, and they say now, they're, they're fighting this in the Supreme Court, is you cannot pray in public. How many ever go to, used to go to the football games and they would um, have a prayer before the game started? Mm -hmm. Any of you remember those days? Huh? In fact, when we sing our national anthem, People get down on their knees, not because they want to humble themselves, but because they don't want to stand and honor our veterans that have fought to keep our freedom that we have here. And little by little, what has happened is that we do not fear God, we do not fear evil, so we invite evil into our lives and make it a part of our lives. I know that it used to be when I was growing up, Halloween was just a fun time. But more and more, there's some evil that has come into Halloween that ha ha people don't understand. They just celebrate all this stuff. But what are they celebrating? Tell, tell me what you see when you drive around town. People are getting ready for Halloween. What do you see? Ghosts, ghosts goblins, decorations. Now, what good do you see in ghosts and goblins and vampires and all that? Is there any good in that? No. Yeah. None. And so who is it glorifying? Is it glorifying God or is it glorifying the devil? The devil. devil. Yeah. And here we celebrate that. And we used to, you know, have an alternative where we had kids do a little, had, uh, a penny carnival type of thing or we just had fun. And the uh, other churches were doing that. So, you know, what I decided a couple years ago is we're just going to sing praises to God on that day. We're going to take that day back, a day that... In fact, you know what Halloween, where that word Halloween came from? Anybody have an idea what hallow means? Well, we say in the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Praise. Huh? Praise. Holy. High and holy, yeah. Holy is your name. And so we have a holy evening the day before All Saints Day, which is November 1st, the day before, and we have turned the 
holy Eve into something that is wicked. Now, I'm not telling you don't take your kids trick-or-treating or don't celebrate anything like that, but I'm just saying that this is what has happened over the years. And so I have decided that, you know, why not take that holiday back to glorify God by singing praises to Him. So why fear? Okay, so what are some of your fears? Alice, what are you afraid about? Um, I'm afraid of probably losing my family. Losing your family. Well, that's a legitimate fear. It's a good fear, right? Because you don't want to lose your family. Heights? How many, how many of you ever been to the Grand Canyon? I, when I see people going up to the very edge and looking down and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> how many of you like to walk all the way to the edge and, and look down, huh? No. I, I don't know. I stay far away from that edge. <laughs> I know in Hawaii they had the, what they call the Pali Lookout and they looked out on the windward side of that beautiful scenery. And this is where King Kamehameha had his warriors march against uh, these people and they pushed them off the cliff. And they tell me that if the wind is blowing just right, somebody can jump off that cliff and be brought right back up. The wind is that strong. I wouldn't try it if I were you. <laughs> You're taking your life in your hands. <laughs> but the fear of height, okay, what else? And do you have any fear? Used to. What, what kind of fear? When I was driving, during the winter, white out, couldn't see nothing. White out. How many of you have ever been through a white out driving? I remember was one time I was coming back from a Bible Bowl tournament over in Craig, Colorado, and I was coming through Rabbit Ears. Anybody know where Rabbit Ears mm -hmm. is? Huh? Rabbit Rabbit snowy Rabbit. Range? And it was like it's, it was a whiteout, and these semis would come passing you, and when they passed you, it's like you couldn't see anything. And it was those in those days when I was not a really s smart driver. I mean, I took chances, I took risks, and I I would just drive. I I'd get behind that semi because I knew that if that semi was there, then no deer would. I wouldn't hit any deer because the truck would hit the deer first. <laughs> well, what happens if you step on the brake on ice? It's not good again. Anybody ever age. spun out on ice? Yep. I remember one time I was traveling from Scotts Bluff to come up to the Alliance, and uh, right before I got to the Angora Hill, where that row of trees are, I was going 65 miles per hour, the road, the road looked dry, and all of a sudden my truck started spinning and there's no way I could control that. Going 65 miles per hour, I ended up hitting the edge of the road and my truck went like this, and then went like this. I should have died! Why? Because this thing called momentum, you know what momentum is? It, it should have, I should have just rode and I could have got killed. You yeah, had God with you. But God was with me. I believe the angels said, now's not your time. <laughs> What's your fear? Kidnappers. Huh? Kidnappers. Kidnappers? Yeah, kidnappers. Have you been kidnapped before? Mm -hmm. No? Almost. Okay, that's something well, to sometimes. be fearful about. Yeah. Oh, I sleep at the wheel. Falling asleep with you. How many of you have ever fallen asleep at the wheel? Unfortunately. When I was in Hawaii, I was driving to work one day. I was working uh, full time as a security guard over in Honolulu. And I ran a flower shop in the daytime. So I was working all day. I'd go home, take a shower, slept a couple of hours, then I head uh, back out. And then I wake up, uh, I mean, uh, get off my shift and went to the flower, the uh, wholesaler, and slept in the parking lot for a couple of hours. And they'd come knocking on my window and wake me up, and then I drove all the way back. I did that for two weeks. Well, the last day, I went to this little town. 
and I was in the other lane of me, and I could have gotten killed, or I could have killed somebody. Yeah, that's a good fear, right? <clears throat> You're up all asleep. It should, fear should motivate us to do the right thing. Anybody else have a fear they want to share? Fear of losing um, my ability to walk. Oh, that, that can be a, a really extreme fear. And, uh, any part of physical fear, like losing your eyesight, losing your hearing. I've got hearing aids now. I never thought of, I never dreamed that I would have to wear hearing aids, but I'm a little um, stubborn. Instead of putting my earmuffs on and using power tools, I don't take the time to go get my earmuffs. Or protecting your eyes. You know. Yeah, that's a good fear. Okay, anybody else? One more. Alice, you already shared one. Somebody else? Nobody else? Okay, you, what's your last one? Um, like, it's like someone, I can't remember her name, but I saw her when um, my mom was driving, and it was her first time, and she was really scared of the highway. She doesn't like the highway. So, you know, the highway is something that is dangerous, and you should have fear. That's a good fear, because fear can cause us to be more cautious when we drive, right? So let's go into the Bible. In 1 John 4, John says, This is how we know that we live in Him, and He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. You know, get this one. There is no in love. But perfect love drives out fear. If you don't want to be fearful, then you need to understand the love of God. Because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now there's uh, this story in Genesis, right? When the messengers returned to Jacob. Uh, if you remember who Jacob and Esau were, uh, th does anybody know who the firstborn was? Esau. Esau was the firstborn. And Jacob, you know, he, his mom wanted Jacob to get the blessing, the inheritance. So Jacob did as his mom told him, put on some furry coats to make it look like that he was Esau. And, and so he deceived his dad and stole the blessing, and he became the one that would receive the blessing and the inheritance. So because of that, Esau and Jacob were at odds with each other. And here, Jacob is traveling after being away for a while, and he finds out that his brother is coming to see him, and he says, oh, He's coming to get me. He's coming to take revenge after what I did to him. So this is what's going on. So, so we went to your brother Esau, and now he is coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. Now what would you think if your brother that you're at odds with have an army of uh, 400 men, and they're coming, what do you think he's going to do, right? He's out to get me. In great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups, and the flocks and herds and camels as well. He thought if Esau comes and attacks one group, the other group is left, may escape. Okay? So he put one of them over here and one over there, and hoping that at least they both won't get attacked. 
in Deuteronomy, 